Yellowstone is located at the northeastern tip of the Snake River Plain, a flat, striking corridor that cuts through the mountainous region. This scar was created by a hot spot in the Earth's mantle that is the geological equivalent of a gas burner on a stove that was slowly replaced by the North American tectonic plate triggering a series of major northeast trending volcanic eruptions over the past 17 million years. The most recent super eruption occurred 640,000 years ago, spewing enough lava to build several Mount Rainiers. The explosion emptied a huge underground chamber, which then collapsed and caused the landscape to plummet into an oval-shaped caldera, the size of Rhode Island and surrounded by faults. A magma chamber still lies beneath Yellowstone, a remnant of that massive eruption. It is estimated that there are 10,000 cubic kilometers of magma in it. But the chamber is only 15 to 20 percent liquid, so it is too thick to erupt anytime soon. Although magma underlies most of the park, it is closest to the surface, within 5 kilometers, beneath the north shore of Yellowstone Lake. With magma temperatures above 800 degrees Celsius, the heat flowing through the ground is very hot namely 100 times the average of the Earth's surface. In the garden, rainwater and snowmelt that seep into the room is heated to more than 250 degrees Celsius but remains liquid because the enormous pressure underground prevents the water from expanding into steam. The hot fluid, mixed with carbon dioxide and foul-smelling hydrogen sulfide gas, gushes back through cracks in the surrounding rock dissolving sodium, silica, chloride, arsenic and other minerals and eventually reaches the surface and flows into thousands of hot springs and mud pots. The bubbling that makes Yellowstone a geological wonder. Although scientists have studied Yellowstone's hydrothermal system since the 1870s, it wasn't until 1966 that people began to realize that the system could produce such powerful explosions. That summer, Patrick Muffler, then a young scientist at the USGS, stepped into Pocket Basin for the first time, near the western edge of Yellowstone. This vast, drooping grassland is filled with bubbling hot springs and fills the air with the slight smell of hydrochloric acid. This basin is surrounded on three sides by low ridges dotted with several spindly trees. As Muffler and his supervisor, Donald White, explored the landscape, White quickly recognized something familiar. White was one of only a handful of people worldwide studying hydrothermal systems at the time. He visits the small town of Lake City, California, five nights after a strange natural disaster occurred there. An inconspicuous collection of hot springs, which feed the lush, marshy elephant grasslands, have exploded, throwing 300,000 tons of mud and rock into the surrounding fields. Most of the rock is a mixture of gravel and sand, cemented with white zeolite and opal minerals. White knew that these materials formed when mineral-saturated hydrothermal water reached a cooler surface and its dissolved substances crystallized. He concluded that the explosion was a hydrothermal explosion triggered by underground water turning into steam. As White and Muffler walked up the ridge surrounding Pocket Basin, their boots crunched on similar rocks. White theorizes that this basin is a hydrothermal explosion crater that is much larger than the crater in Lake City, which is roughly the size of Yankee Stadium. A ridge is a pile of debris thrown out of a hole. However, this explosion was not triggered by a sudden injection of volcanic heat from below. 
They suspect this is caused by environmental changes on the surface. The blast debris sits directly on top of the rocks and gravel left behind when the Pinedale Ice Sheets glaciers retreated at the end of the last ice age, about 13,500 years ago. Even if there were glaciers, hot springs would melt the ice above them and create ice-dammed lakes. The weight of the lake would have put pressure on the hot springs below, preventing the water from boiling even if the temperature was over 100 degrees Celsius. Muffler and White speculate that as the glacier retreated, the ice dam broke and the lake's water level plummeted. A few years later, geologists added one more crater to the list, Mary Bay, a lobe that stretches along the north shore of Yellowstone Lake. At 2.6 kilometers wide, it remains the largest hydrothermal explosion crater ever discovered on Earth, forming around the same time as Pocket Basin. This discovery sparked a long-standing debate about whether the monster explosion in Yellowstone was caused solely by shrinking ice, or whether another type of trigger could have triggered the current explosion. <laughs>